Sex statistics that too many guys don't know. 7 basic sex stats most guys don't know, explored. Ever contemplated matters of a sexual nature? If you're like most people, the answer is likely yes. Chances are, you've dedicated a considerable amount of time to fantasizing about it, and perhaps, you've also experienced moments of concern, pondering questions such as, am I normal, or, am I proficient in bed? Despite the extensive time individuals spend contemplating sex, there exists a notable gap in their understanding of it. This knowledge deficit is largely attributed to the lack of comprehensive sex education in our culture, coupled with the prevalence of misinformation that fills this void. Consequently, many individuals navigate through life without possessing fundamental sexual facts. Ask men consulted with several sex experts and educators to uncover essential knowledge that we believe every man should be acquainted with. Here's what they had to share. What the average penis size is. The average size of the penis is considerably smaller than what is often portrayed in porn, explains Gigi Engel, sex and intimacy expert at SKYN Condoms and author. It falls between 5.1 and 5.5 inches. This understanding is crucial because our society tends to be fixated on larger penises, leading to potential body shame and impacting one's perception of their sex life. It's logical that pornographic videos feature performers with larger than average penises. After all, porn is a form of entertainment, akin to movies showcasing exceptionally attractive individuals or action films featuring characters with more muscular physiques than the average person. However, when underage individuals watch porn as a form of sexual education, which is a common occurrence in the streaming era, they may mistakenly interpret these exaggerated depictions as a normative snapshot of reality. When guys have sex for the first time, on average, many men grapple with significant sexual anxiety, particularly when they perceive themselves as late bloomers. The pressure to engage in sexual activity quickly is a recurring theme in portrayals of teenage culture. Nobody wants to be the last to experience sex, and the impulsive rush into sexual intimacy, whether one feels ready or not, can be overwhelming and detrimental. It's crucial to bear in mind that the average age at which people lose their virginity is 17 years old. This realization not only dispels the notion of being behind schedule if one hasn't engaged in sexual activity by their mid to late teens but also highlights that a substantial number of individuals have their first sexual experiences in their 20s, balancing out those who started earlier. How many sexual partners an average guy has in his life? Whether termed as, your number, or a, body count, the question of how many people someone has been intimate with is a matter of significance for many individuals. A high number may be perceived as an indication of one's sexual prowess and attractiveness, while, on the flip side, it might lead to judgments of being easy or promiscuous. Conversely, a low number might be associated with someone being deemed frigid or unattractive. This situation can create a perceived lose-lose scenario, particularly for women, who often face slut-shaming for behaviors that are applauded in men. Amidst the varied opinions, what is the actual average? While it's impossible to know for certain, given that statistics are reliant on self-reporting, which can lead to some degree of data manipulation, an examination of various studies and surveys suggests that having four to eight sexual partners throughout one's life is considered quite normal. How long sex lasts, on average? Once again, pornography has the potential to foster unrealistic expectations. If you've watched lengthy porn videos lasting half an hour or more, where the performer seems to continue without climaxing until the very end, you might perceive this as the standard. However, as previously mentioned, it is more of an exaggeration for entertainment purposes than an accurate reflection of typical sexual encounters in the real world. Gigi Engel emphasizes, the average time it takes a person to ejaculate from start to finish is about 5.5 minutes. This information is significant because many individuals may incorrectly believe they suffer from premature ejaculation when, in reality, it falls within the average duration. Engel offers guidance, if this is something that stresses you out, don't immediately focus on penis stimulation. Instead, explore other sexual activities like oral sex or manual stimulation, keeping the emphasis on your partner, allowing both of you to experience heightened pleasure. How likely women are to climax from PIV sex. Regarding the duration of time it takes for individuals to reach climax, consider the following information. On average, it takes a woman 20 minutes to have an orgasm, while men typically take 3 to 5 minutes, notes sex educator Deborah Leno. 
Observing a notable disparity between these two figures has implications, contributing in part to the existence of the well-known orgasm gap. In heterosexual encounters, men are more likely to achieve orgasm than women. This discrepancy is partly attributed to timing, as penile vaginal intercourse often concludes before the woman is fully prepared. Additionally, it is influenced by the focus on internal stimulation within the vagina, neglecting the more sensitive clitoris. Jess O'Reilly, PhD, host of the At Sex with DR Jess podcast, highlights that the vast majority of women don't consistently orgasm from penile vaginal penetration alone. Citing a study published in Archives of Sexual Behavior, she shares crucial findings. Women report having an orgasm 31 to 40 percent of the time during intercourse. Incorporating external stimulation, e.g., simultaneous clitoral rubbing with hands or a vibrator, increases this rate to 51 to 60 percent. In instances of unassisted intercourse, with no additional clitoral stimulation, orgasm prevalence drops to 21 to 30 percent. O'Reilly's advice is to use your hands or toys for external stimulation during intercourse to enhance the likelihood of orgasm. How much semen an average ejaculation contains. Similar to misconceptions about penis size and the duration of sexual activity, pornography might lead you to believe otherwise, but the average volume of ejaculate is not as substantial as one might think. Consistent research indicates that it typically falls within the range of 2 to 5 milliliters, approximately equivalent to half a teaspoon to one teaspoon. If concerns arise about not producing enough semen during ejaculation, rest assured, there's no necessity to strive for an increase in semen volume. However, if the visual aspect is a personal preference and you desire a more substantial, sticky display during climax, the most effective approach is to abstain from orgasming for extended periods between climaxes. How many people have STIs? An unexpectedly high percentage of people, as highlighted by Engel, have herpes, specifically, 67% or two-thirds of the population. Engel emphasizes that herpes can be transmitted orally as well as genitally, and it typically isn't included in a standard STI panel screening. Consequently, the majority of individuals remain unaware of their herpes status, as testing is only conducted if a doctor suspects an active outbreak with visible sores. Discussing the prevalence of sexually transmitted infections STIs, that often go unnoticed, O'Reilly adds insights from a study involving over 1,600 participants. The study estimated that 77% of chlamydia cases were asymptomatic, resulting in 95% of cases going untreated. Summing it up, O'Reilly states, the CDC estimates that on any given day, 20% of the US population has an STI. This translates to one-fifth of the population. Therefore, if your count of past partners is 5 or higher, there's a significant likelihood that one of them had an STI. Considering the potential long-term consequences of untreated STIs, such as infertility, cardiovascular and neurological issues, and an elevated risk of certain cancers, undergoing testing serves as the optimal defense to ensure timely treatment and reduce the likelihood of complications, notes O'Reilly. Numerous STIs, including chlamydia, syphilis, and gonorrhea, are treatable, with some being curable through straightforward antibiotic regimens. O'Reilly emphasizes the necessity to overcome the stigma preventing people from seeking testing. She concludes, we must dismantle the culture of shame that deters individuals from getting tested. There exists a pervasive fear of a positive diagnosis and the prospect of taking a few pills, overshadowing concerns about potential long-term health issues. By fostering open conversations about STIs, safe sex practices, and testing, we can create a climate where individuals are more inclined to undergo testing, receive treatment, and experience enhanced well-being. If you enjoyed watching this video don't forget to like subscribe and turn on the notification bell, so you don't miss any new videos. Let us know your thoughts about this video in the comments section down below and feel free to stay and enjoy it until the end, also make sure to check out our next highlighted video and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.